Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Rage here. Today we're having another video. This video is about Borderlands 3. If you don't already know, which you may already, Gearbox had a Borderlands 3 gameplay reveal event in which they showed off a lot of the new features, characters, and activities you can do in Borderlands 3. And this video is gonna basically uh, point out a lot of the key features and new things that they showed off in this event. And I'm gonna link the trailer, or I say trailer, but the it's like a full hour long demo that they did in the description. So that way you can see it for yourself if you haven't already. It's a pretty cool thing. Um, a lot of the stuff they did is basically just putting them in this century of video games. A lot of games have done some of the things that they added and I think it's about time and it was a smart move of them to actually implement this. So let's jump right into what we got here. All right guys, so first and foremost, the first thing that they show off is one of the new playable characters. They show off Amara, who is a siren, just like Lilith. And you get to see that uh, they mentioned that at the start of the game when you first unlock the, you first unlock your skills, your first skill, you actually unlock all three skill trees right away so you're able to use all three of them or switch between them if you want so that was one of the first things the second thing which is the most obvious thing to notice is the visuals they did change the visual the style is the same and I heard some people complaining about this but I, it makes no sense to me the style is the same it's still cell shade but it looks new it looks it looks cleaner um it doesn't look like it's a second gen or you know something that was they should have been released on the xbox 360 it doesn't look like borderlands 2 and the older games it looks clean it looks nice i really like it and it looks like a lot of the colors are have more saturation so everything looks much nicer much brighter I guess you would say the visuals look fantastic in my opinion now on to the next thing third item that I saw was there's more customization for your characters you can do custom emotes as they show off in the demo um, you can like in Borderlands 2 you can change the skins your head uh, the clothes and then this was something newer that I saw is you can change the echo theme. So um, again, not all of this is fully detailed. They just gave a brief overview, but it looks like you can change like the color scheme and I don't know, maybe possible the way the panels look or the borders. Uh, they didn't, like I said, they didn't go into full detail, but they did show that you can do these things, which is kind of cool having more customization having the freedom to personalize things the way you want makes games more enjoyable because you feel like it's a part of you it's something that you're doing that's why people like games where they can build the player to look and be the way they want so that's cool i really i really think that that's that's just something it's something small but it's something that's neat next thing that they added and this is probably one of the the things that I mentioned that brings this game along the, the lines of some of the newer shooters and stuff is they made this game have sliding and mantling. Sliding and mantling allows for more versatility and it, it really ups the speed of the combat to make things feel more more fresh, faster paced. Um, it's it's a very cool aesthetic. It's very enjoyable to slide and shoot somebody. This is in Call of Duty, Destiny, games like that. You can do these and, and it's very enjoyable. So I think by adding those, you add another you add another layer of versatility that makes the combat feel newer, feel fresh. The old combat style, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but you can tell between Borderlands 2 and the prequel, the things kind of changed with the dynamic of you being able to jump higher, obviously because you're on the moon, 
and it just the combat felt different it felt newer and more unique in the prequel in my opinion so i think this adds another level of diversity and it it looks like it's going to add for some some fun enjoyable gameplay the next thing which is the thing that they brag about the most in this game is the new guns not just the new guns but the new gun style um i'm going to cover the guns more in depth uh most importantly, I'm going to cover the fact that there are nine weapon manufacturers that we have seen so far. Now, I think there's 12 total. There's three of them that were discovered during data mining. But as far as I know, I don't know if there's anything that's been said about those or shown. Um, but the nine that I'm going to talk about, uh, some of them are, I think all of them, probably except for one, are from the, the uh, original games. And have been brought into this one and if you remember they all have unique perks and we're gonna cover those unique perks so of the nine you've got Jacob Jacob has hard-hitting bullets that can ricochet Atlas weapons that fire smart bullets you actually they demonstrate this a lot where you tag an enemy and the smart bullets kind of like on um, Project Red's new game cyberpunk where you can fire from behind cover with your smart bullets. Uh, once you track somebody, they just, they've been, the bullets bend around and, and track them and, and hit them. Um, so that was for Atlas weapons. Then there was the TDOR, which I'm probably saying that, I'm probably butchering it. Um, but you should remember those weapons. Uh, you waste a lot of ammo with them for one, but instead of reloading the gun, you throw the gun and um on this borderlands 3 they showed off a lot of the the new um traits or differences with those guns with some of them uh, like in the trailer one of them grows legs and walks around shooting and so you can throw a bunch of those i don't know the limitations on that but there was one that had legs then there was one that basically turned into a grenade ball and bounced around and then blew up there was another one that when you threw it it turned into three missiles that tracked enemies so it seems like they've added a lot of diversity in that and make it more unique just another cool feature that they've added to this game uh, hyperion guns have a shield that pops up kind of like with a turret uh, so when you're adsing there's a shield the doll allows you to have alternate firing modes, um, which is cool. I don't remember a lot of this from the other ones, to be honest. Uh, I could be wrong, though. Uh, Vladoff, which the Vladoff weapons are probably had my favorite features, and that was the underbarrel attachments. So not only do you have a shotgun or a pistol or an assault rifle, but it could also have an alternate firing mode or essentially an underbarrel attachment that fires missiles. So you basically got two weapons in one. That looked very cool. Um, it looked like something that could make for unique loadouts. And it's something that, that I, I would really like to, I don't know when they're gonna allow, put out um, gameplay, maybe a beta or something seen streamers that were that were streaming it uh showing this stuff off but it'd be something really really interesting to see how how it's gonna work when you get your hands on it now on to the next you've got torg you can switch between projectile and sticky firing modes and you can detonate them um malawan two different elements you can switch between and then the cov which is the children of the vault weapons which is a newer one has infinite ammo but the exception is that the guns Description says the guns can randomly overheat. <clears throat> so kind of like in, uh, what was it, Mass Effect 2, where you didn't have ammo. Or was that the first one? I think it was the first one. Where you didn't have ammo, your guns would just overheat. So, and then Mass Effect 2, they added the ammo, and it was kind of stupid. But, um, yeah, so, like I said, then there's three other ones that really weren't detailed. So we just know from data mining that there are three other ones. But... That's kind of cool. Those weapons, uh, 
they seem a lot more unique and diverse and the the way the weapons look uh in most in the other borderlands games most of the weapons looked very similar most of the pistols looked very similar uh most weapons like i said they just they looked very similar they looked kind of plain unless you had you know a uh legendary weapon and this one even some of the more basic weapons looked very cool upon design um another thing that i'm gonna throw in there that i saw was whenever they they kill a boss and i think this works just for any enemies obviously but whenever it would drop loot if you look from a distance at that weapon or whatever it is a 3d model would appear uh, above it showing that weapon i thought that was very cool that's just something aesthetically pleasing um that was that was very cool that i thought was uh unique uh Something else that they showed off during combat was degradable cover. You can actually shoot cover and it breaks away. Now, I don't know if it can fully break away. I think when I saw them, um, they were shooting at some cover that had like sheet metal in front of it and the sheet metal broke away, but there was still the metal frame part and it didn't fully cover you. Now, I don't think you can destroy it completely. I could be wrong. But I didn't see them demonstrate that in the reveal demo. They just demonstrated that it breaks away the, the sheet metal part. So, again, something new. So now you can't just hide behind certain cover, which I don't know a lot of people that do that anyways. But that way enemies can't just hide behind something, which they usually don't either. But degradable cover, that's something new. And uh, so... That's a lot of new things right there, but then it doesn't stop. They also go on to show something that, that I think is gonna make this game, um, as far as DLC and uh, keeping the game fresh, is the, the new social player hub, and that's the Sanctuary 3 spaceship. And that's where you can go, they said, in between missions, and you have your own player room that you can go in and design yourself and I think that room is based on whoever's lobby you're in that's the room you see you can uh, put trophies in there uh, weapons on the wall you can customize it in the ways you want again we didn't get full details on how deep the customization is but they said you can customize it to be the way you want that's very cool um, I like that idea again games that allow you to have more customization and more, um, more ability to do things and show, make it personal to you, make the game more enjoyable, more long lasting, makes people wanna play more because you wanna make it yours, you want it to be unique and show it off. That is something that is cool. One other thing that they showed that was, that was cool is that right outside of that is a new vending machine that actually collects the loot that you leave behind during missions and so if you forgot to pick something up or something fell off to an area that you can't reach it it's no longer gone you can pick it up from that machine after the mission once you get up there now let me back it up a little bit this is something there's something that they added in this game that was one of my big complaints with Division 2 and I don't know why other games haven't done this it might just be hard to do and that might be why it hasn't been done as much but one thing that they added that is absolutely amazing is that Borderlands 3 has loot instancing where every player gets their own loot which is not, not what I'm referring to, but it drops at the proper level according to player, and enemies are also the same level as the players. So if you and a friend are playing, and your buddy's way ahead of you, say they're level 25 and you're only level 9, you're not going to be facing like Division does, where they do it in between. So if you're, if you're level 20 and your buddy's level 9, you're going to be facing about level 15 or 16 enemies. That makes it not very enjoyable for the level nine <laughs> so in order 
to fix that somehow i'm not sure how they did this but this is really cool where if you join your buddy who's very high level and you're a low level the enemies you are facing will appear to you as um your level and on his they'll be his level as well so it's matched to each character even though you might be fighting the same enemies and i think what it does is it just ad adjusts the damage for the player so um the damage output if someone's joining you that's a higher level i believe they will do less damage that way it doesn't make them too overpowered um i'm not 100 percent how it works but it makes it where you don't it doesn't discourage co-op if there's a big gap in your level which is something that division two did a very poor job at and some people don't have a problem with that and that is why they added where you can play classic mode if you don't want to do that so if you don't want to do that and you'd rather just have your buddy be overpowered and carry you through and just power level you or whatever you can do that as well you can play classic mode um, but I think that's also gonna adjust the loot which means that you're no longer gonna have um, separate loot so if they're you know hogs and they grab the loot first they get the loot whereas if you have it on the new mode you each get your own individual loot you don't have to worry about them taking the loot uh, it's not an issue now you can share loot that is something that they said you can share loot with other players so again something new that they added but back to sanctuary 3 which is the spaceship the social hub uh, that is where essentially kind of like when you would go into town and go to um, go to vendors and things of that nature that is all now on the sanctuary 3 that is on the ship. Did I say Sanctuary 2? I don't know. Anyways, that is where you will go. Now, once you go to the bridge and you see the map, you're actually allowed to leave Pandora. You can go to other planets. Again, something that's not 100% certain on what the how many there are and if there is a limit how big these planets are when you land is you know are the maps broken up into sections or is it you land and it's just that section that you land that's the area you can explore and that's it i haven't seen full details on that yet uh randy pitchford did say that there's going to be a lot more information coming in the coming months before the game releases it does release in september so in reality there's only four months so hopefully we'll start to see a lot more here in the next month or two so basically they've expanded the universe so kind of like in games of you know destiny where you can go to different planets um i'm sure there's gonna be different enemy types on based on the planet you're on and things of that nature so it looks like there's a lot that they can explore with and they can go as far as DLC goes and new vaults. It opens up a whole array of possibilities by allowing you to travel <clears throat> planet to planet. I think that's an awesome feature. It seems like so far <clears throat> they have answered all of my concerns that I, were, I was having because a game that has not had a sequel in a long time like Borderlands last one was what eight years ago something like that when you haven't had a a game release in such a long time not counting the prequel by the way you have a concern of meeting expectations and if you release just another borderlands game would it be enjoyable yeah and people would be happy because it's something new but you have to have a way to bring that fresh and new dynamic to the game and it looks like they have done that above and beyond. And this is just what we know so far. We haven't experienced everything yet. And I feel like this game is going to have a lot, a lot to explore. Um, 
Obviously, they, they brag about all the weapons they have, but it's bringing a fresh take on the game, not just visually, but as far as the way combat works, as far as the areas you can explore, um, the story dynamic, the characters. So everything seems to be new while still containing the same essence that you love about Borderlands, which is the character styles the you know the clap trap he's always he's always that goofy kooky silly um robot the way they introduce the sub bosses and the main bosses you know they still keep that same borderlands feel while bringing in all these new fun things that just expand that universe even more i think this is going to be a home run i don't want to have my expect my expectations way too high because Usually when you do, it's always a letdown if it's not exactly where you want it to be. But I'm very excited for this game. I cannot wait to see what else they show us. It seems like it's going to be a home run. But those are my thoughts. Again, I'm going to link the reveal demo down in the description below. Let me know what you think. Uh, do these things seem interesting to you? Uh, are you excited about it? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.